Red lights are on now. The revs rise. The cars crackle. And away we go. It's a brilliant start from Yankee. A terrible start from Robin Frins. And he's going to be jumped here by Nico Muller in the white and blue Draco car. Through goes Muller in second place. It's Frins in third. On to pick in fourth. And everybody fanning out into that opening hairpin. And let's take a look at final results with the win then from Bianchi. Muller in second, Frins in third, Artur Pick fourth, Ko Magson in fifth. Sam Burr, the top Brit, in eighth position, but giving away points to Robin Frins there. Will Stevens completing the top ten. The back of the pack, that means the red light's about to come on. Then we'll be underway here at Nürburgring. The lights are on. Out they go. Who's got the jump? It's Frins in the red and white machine. Sorensen in the little back car. And it's Frins from pole who converts that into an immediate lead as they surge down towards turn one. Jules Bianchi also a good stop. Artur Pick, a bobby and weaving position. It's three wide in the midfield. Are we going to have the traditional pile up? Not quite. They all just about get through with Frins leading it from Bianchi, who's made a super start to wrestle second place away from Marco Sorensen. After the safety car, those that are on the wets, they will find a little bit of grip this time round before those tyres start to overheat, which is why we're seeing some of the drivers carving up through the field like a hot knife through butter. Danny Move, one of those, he slides past his teammate Walter Grubmiller. Runs a little bit wide as the two P1 drivers flying in formation. Also, Kevin Magnussen gaining ground. And we saw that Magnussen was one of the drivers who put on those wet tyres. You can see in car Magnussen, he's still got the wets on. And there is a little bit of spray being kicked up into that camera. Yeah, but sadly the spray's only in a straight line, really. You can see him already trying to hunt for those uh, damp patches on the circuit. He's literally got two or three laps before those wets are going to be shot, I think. He's going to have to make a second pit stop. Yeah, that's a very brave move. As again, I think that's yellow uh, making a bit of contact in that first sector, but again... Also shown very well is Antonio Fitz Costa. He has scythed up through the field. He's into fifth position. So Antonio Fitz Costa showing well. Welcome back to the Nürburgring, the seventh round of the 2012 World Series Barone, the three and a half leagues championship. It has been an absolutely fantastic race here. It was dry, then wet, dry, and now it's wet again. It's Nick Yellily who has played the strategy the best. He has taken over the lead of the race, but the action throughout the field is absolutely frenetic as Alexander Rossi and Antonio Felix da Costa, the Arden Caterham teammates. So Yellily takes the win from Marco Sorensen. Andre Nagrao did hold on to third, but Sam Bird snatched fourth position with Robin Frins in fifth. Elation rounding out the top six, and then Danny Move. Red lights come on. One, two, three, four, five. Revs rise, out they go. Who's got the jump for the line? It's a super start from Frins. Also well away is Marco Sorensen as the field fan out along the very short run in towards turn one. Are they all cleanly through? Yes, they are, just a little bit of tyre smoke. So it is Frins who leads it. Sorensen in second place. It's side by side for third. Jules Bianchi just edges out Sam Bird. He's in fourth. It's Artur Pick who is into fifth position. There is, in fact, that Nico Muller who is has made the superstars. It's Nico Muller who's climbing up through the order. So, Alice Farn results with the win for Frins. Bianchi in second and Bird completing the podium. Will Stevens, a brilliant drive up into 10th position, which means the red lights come on one by one. The revs rise, all the lights are on. Out they go. Who's got the jump for the line? It's a superstar from Jules Bianchi, but also well away is Marco Sorensen and Artur Pick as they arrive into the first turn. It's Sorensen who is edging his way through, and also a brilliant start from Pick. But Bianchi's trying to hold on. Carlos Huertas, amongst others, runs well, and Bianchi tangles with Sorensen. So Jules Bianchi has had a moment, didn't see the start of that, just the end of it. Hopefully not too much damage to that car, as also we have got problems for Vittorio Girelli. 10, Nick Yellily following that disastrous pit stop in 16, and Sam Bird no points following that lap one incident for the man who was second in the championship coming in to today. Eight races to go. The red light comes on now, the revs rise, and away we go. It's a good start from Magnussen. Also well away is Robin Frins. And Jules Bianchi's got a good jump. And it's Bianchi who's going to gain places. He moves into second position. It's Magnussen who leads. Bianchi second. Then Robin Frins slips to third as they come through Abbey for the first time. And then into Village. They all fan out. And there's some spots of rain already appearing on the camera lens. Here they come into the loop. They're one of the new corners on the Grand Prix circuit. And quite a few of them running wide. Now, James, whether that's just pushing too hard, or well, maybe the track's getting a little bit slippery. Yeah, exactly. But a lot of that's more to do with concentration than physical fitness, I think. In these conditions, we see Felix Costa again having another look down the inside of the club, just managing to avoid contact there with Zampiedri. But again, he's very, very quick in this late stage of the race. You can see how good his traction is there. Just literally drives straight past him, even on that standing water. So uh, 
And now will Felix Costa be looking to make similar move? Carlos Huertas, he launches the inside into Vale, and Huertas sees him in time. And Antonio Felix Costa goes through, claims fifth position. That's a really nicely judged move. Also, very fair driving from the Colombian driver Carlos Huertas because he didn't move across. As well as we take a look at the final results with victory for Jules Bianchi. Second place for Robin Frins, Nigel Melker completes the podium. Very strong fourth for Nick Yellowly. Antonio Felix Costa rounding out the top five and also setting the fastest lap of the race after what was a very attritional affair. Only nine drivers finishing on the lead lap. Red lights are on, so here we go. Not a very long hold and it's caught the front wing men by surprise and through comes Robin Freens. Very good start from him. Sam Bird as well is up behind the black car of Sorensen, but it is the Lotus driver that's got the lead. Freens in second place, Sam Bird in third position and Jules Bianchi, the pole man, dumped down the order. He's in fourth trying to go around the outside and turn that into an inside move, but on the wet there might not have helped. You're absolutely right. De Costa may be the man to come out on top here. He's got the momentum, and it all started before the new pits when Frins had that big lockup, and that allowed Bianchi to get on terms. And he goes through on the inside into Cobb's corner, and they almost come to a standstill. And through goes Antonio Felix De Costa. It is the Portuguese who's in third, not Robin Frins, not Gil Bianchi. Oh, that's the leader, Marco Sorensen, left rear puncture. Sorensen is in the gravel at Luffield. Igor Salaquada cannot believe it. With no minutes and one lap remaining, the race-long leader is out, and Sam Bird past the new Pitts building. It is victory number two of the season for Sam Bird. Second for Antonio Felix da Costa, third for Jules Bianchi, and delight for the ISR team as they win at Silverstone. The red lights come on, 44 minutes plus a lap ahead of them, and away we go. It's a super start from Robin Frins, who jumps into the lead as the pack rocket down to the first turn. But Frins made that look very easy. Jules Bianchi trying to find the way around Kevin Magnussen, but it's Frins from Magnussen, then Bianchi, the top three into the first corner. And Tony Fitzcosta tries to squeeze through on Carlos Huertas, and they're all safely through. But Robin Frins, that's exactly what he needs to do, James, from pole to convert it into the early advantage. And also, it can be quite demoralising as well when you've got a teammate who's charging for the championship. Most of your teammates will know this, that the team, to an extent, are always focusing their attention on them. There's a move for Antonio Fix to Costa to the inside of Archer Pick. He squeezes through, up into fourth position. Really nicely judged overtaking manoeuvre, and that is the textbook Hungarian pass. As we take a look at the final results with victory for Robin Frins, second place for Kevin Magson, Jules Bianchi third, Antonio Fix to Costa fourth, Archer Pick completes the top five. Green flag waved at the rear of the pack. The red lights come on. 44 minutes plus a lap ahead of us. Out go lights and Frins goes nowhere. A terrible start for Robin Frins. And Ken Magson shoots into the lead of the race. Also getting away well is Antonio Fix to Costa. Our true pick was a little bit delayed, but he fights in the yellow car to try and go around the outside of Antonio Fix to Costa as they head into the first corner. But it's Magnussen from the Red Bull car of Antonio Fix to Costa. And then Will's there is Antonio Fix to Costa in hot pursuit. And the Costa looks very healthy. Well, the team, yeah, we know they're nervous in the garage, and more smoke coming through turn four. And the gap's really come down now, it's by half no, a second. And Magnussen pulls off, Magnussen pulls off the track and out of the race. Oh, that's such a shame for Kevin Magnussen. And, well, you just have to feel for him, having led all of the way up to the halfway point of the final lap of the race. And Magnussen's car comes to a smouldering stop. It means that Antonio Fitz de Costa then is on the cusp of what will be an absolutely sensational victory for the Arden catering team. Let's not forget Arden, that is Christian Horner's old team, the Red Bull Formula 1 team principal. This is where he cut his teeth running teams, is the Arden squad, and they're a newcomer to the World Series Barano Championship in 2012, and they're just a couple of corners away from their maiden victory of the season. Antonio Fitz de Costa is something of a Hungara ring specialist, as he heads round the final corner, the checker flag is ready and waiting, and it's the most dramatic of victories for Antonio Fix to Costa here at the Hungaro ring. In to second place is going to be Marco Sorensen, and then bittersweet for the Carlin team because of Magnussen drops. Excellent, where well, we get the green flag waved at the rear of the field, the red lights come on, 44 minutes plus a lap ahead of us, the lights flash out, and away we go. And it's a brilliant start from Robin Frint, yellowly bogs down, and so does in midfield, also away poorly, but it's the championship leader, Robin Frint, who leads with the man who's second in the standings, Jules Bianchi, challenging him down to turn one, and Bianchi's got the outside line where it's a little bit drier, he tries to creep around the outside of Frint, nothing doing, so he has to slot him behind him, Andre Negrao it is, 
is Clark Snowden. Then it's the red and black contact car of the pole and yet Yellily. And so Fitz Costa looming up on his tail as well. And Fitz Costa thinks about the move, he jinxed the inside line, and he's going to squeeze through there. He elbows Alation aside. I think Alation's a little bit hard done by there because he gave Tony Fitz Costa maybe a little bit more racing room than he needed to. Is very fair. Let's see it again. So they come into the final corner. Alation sees him coming, doesn't want to retire, gives him the room. Fitz Costa goes through up into fifth. And that is one of the traditional Paul Ricard manoeuvres. If you can catch the uh, momentum out of that penultimate corner, jinx the inside, and through you go. Learn from these guys. That was a classic example of just how important it is to get the corner entry right. If you don't get that right, then it's such a knock-on effect. As we see now, Tocosta making the move on Frins down the inside. An overtake down into inside into turn one is such a challenge because the breaking distance is quite short. And Jules Bianchi slipped behind the pair of them. So something's happened off camera that has seen the lead of the race change around once more. So it's now Nick Yellily. I make it who leads it with Antonio Fitz to cross the right on his tail. Robin Frins in third. Under in the ground fourth. Jules Bianchi in fifth. Through the penultimate left hand and onto the very tight right. And Costa goes for the move and takes the lead of the race. Again, a beautifully judged move, but he then spins up the rears on the way out of the corner. It's going to be a drag race to turn one. The black car of Nick Yellily, the red bull car of Antonio Fitz to Costa. It's to Costa though who's going to get his nose ahead. He's got the inside line for the first corner. Yellily tries to fight back, dumps every which way and goes for the move. Very, very brave. Late on the brakes from Nick Yellily. And all credits Nick, but didn't see him getting that car stopped in time. He judged that perfectly. And he is certainly going to be a sought-after property for next season. And so Fix to Costa, if he comes back and does a full year in the championship in 2013, then he would surely be a red hot title player. But as is the pair of them, are a long, long way clear. And Yelly has a problem there. He's very, very slow through the corner. Now, does he pick the speed up again? I think he does. And that seems he just ran off last. So to Fix to Costa then powers out of the final turn to claim his second win of the season from Nick Yellily in second position. The Arden Catering team will be overjoyed at the never. Gemma Scott's there on the pit. 44 minutes plus a lap of racing, about to get underway here at the legendary Paul Rickard circuit. And away we go. This is a good start from Sam Berg in the white car on the front row. The black and red machine, the Jules Bianchi, though it is, who leads down towards turn one. And I told you, Scott has also got away well, but it's Bianchi from Berg, then the blue car of Kevin Magnussen, who is next man up, and Robin Frins has somehow leapt into fourth in the red and white Forte car, and Frins makes that third, forcing his way through. We've got a spinner in the midfield, and we'll see who that is. It's uh, Daniel Abt, I think, has made contact with Antonio Felix da Costa, and Abt has spun, but you can see Felix da Costa is still going. As Andre in the ground looks to gain ground, as does Antonio Felix da Costa, and da Costa gains the place on Robin Frins, moves up into fourth position, and Felix da Costa in the first race of the weekend was so smooth. Now De Costa up into third place. Let's see if we can see how it happened. So Kevin Magnussen just runs out wide onto the painted blue strip at the edge of the circuit. And Antonio Fitz Costa won't have many more easy, easier passes than that this year. Kevin Magnussen really gifted that to him. Again, Magnussen, a class rookie this year. Well, as of course is Antonio Fitz De Costa. And you just wonder with De Costa, Keith. He's only done a part season. He joined the championship midway through the year. If he had been here for the full season, would he be in this championship fight? You have to suspect that he would have done. I mean, over the last five races, we've seen our championship leaders, Robin Frins, uh, pick up 61 points. Jules Bianchi has picked up 69. But Costa's scored 90. He's done extremely well. He's obviously won the last two races. He's already up into a potential podium position here and really got doing fabulously strongly. And it's interesting. You see with some drivers, when they move up to the quicker cars, they do even better. And here now, Costa attacking Sam Burr. And Antonio Fitz Costa tries to squeeze through, but it's Bird who fights his line on the inside. Around the outside goes Costa. That's really, really bold driving for Antonio Fitz to Costa and Sam Bird. In terms of his championship challenge, he's third in standings. Couldn't afford to let to Costa go through there. Whereas his former teammate at Tech One, Jules Bianchi, is resurgent as this season continues. Bianchi. Though runs a little bit wide over the blue paint, exactly the same thing Magson did, and through goes Antonio Fitz to Costa. So to Costa it is who takes the lead of the race. The Arden team, well, they seem fairly relaxed. This is almost what they're coming to expect from to Costa now is that charging jar drive up through the field. It's, uh, it's going to be close, though. It's a very, very slow pit lane, and Bianchi's just going to get him as they come to the first corner. There wasn't an awful lot in that, but Bianchi's got the lead back off to Costa now. 
as Bianchi heads out the final turn. So let's take a look then at the final results with victory for Jules Bianchi. Frantoni defeats De Costa, who will set the fastest lap. Sam Bird in third, and Nicky Elliott, a good day for the Brits in fourth. Robin Frins fading to what turned out to be a very distant ninth, and that will cost him his championship lead. As the revs rise, the lights go out, and away we go. Here is a brilliant start from Pete De Costa, and we've got Rossi stalled on the grid. Do they all avoid him? Yes, they do. But it's Antonio Fix De Costa, and it's that Sam Bird who's shot up. Jules Bianchi's dropped a long way back, and Robin Frintz has made a rocket ship start. So as they turn to the first corner, it's Bird who leads it. De Costa is in second. Magnussen runs wide. Robin Frintz has come up very well. What order will they sort themselves out into? Three wide through turn three, and that is unlikely to end happily. But they all emerge. Now, who has got what spot? It's still Bird who leads it just from De Costa. And then it's Frins up to third, Maxson in fourth, and Jules Bianchi from pole slip. And we've actually just cut back to the race lead, Ben. De Costa looks like he's made the move on Bird. Yep, so until if it's Costa squeezes through, he's past Sam Bird. We didn't see it on camera, but De Costa's in the lead. Now, can Bird fight back? as they sprint through, and Bird having held the lead for over half an hour here in Barcelona. De Costa knows that Bird is coming at him, he covers the inside line into turn one. Now, does he outbreak himself slightly, Antonio Fitz Costa? No, he doesn't. Let's see what happens. Launches the move to the inside into the chicane, and you were talking, James, about thinking outside the box and catching the other drive by surprise, and that's exactly what De Costa did there. Yeah, fantastic move there by De Costa. Sam wouldn't have seen that coming. But as we said from the beginning, and we see a replay on board with Sam, Sam comes back to the right-hand side to take his normal line. And before he turns in, he realises there's a Red Bull Arden car parked at the apex. Fantastic move. De Costa just carried as much speed as he could through the right-hander there down the hill and just committed to the move and realised that he trusted Sam wasn't going to turn in on him. And uh, that's great racecraft. And then around the final corner, he accelerates on towards the chequered flag. And it is a big win for Antonio Fix De Costa in the penultimate round of the 2012 World Series by Renault with Sam Bird in second. The lights on, out they go, and away we go. Who's got the jump from the lights? A brilliant start from Malaysia from Paul. Robin Frins is also well away, and Sam Bird, though, slightly boxed in the midfield, but Alation and Archie a pick. No, it's Antonio Fix De Costa who made the jump at De Costa. Yesterday's race winner moves into the lead, into the first corner, so De Costa snatches the lead, and that was very much what we were expecting Certainly, the talk in the paddock this morning was that De Costa was the man to look for for a victory, but they're all cleaning through the first couple of turns as Antonio Fix De Costa just a couple of corners from home here in Barcelona. It's been an emphatic performance from the Portuguese driver, and he is going to reel off his fourth win of 2012. So over the line then, and it is the win in Barcelona for Antonio Fix De Costa.